E.T. It's really the first memory I have of being in a cinema and seeing uh, something 20 feet tall, and it's, and it's the first time I actually remember crying in a movie, too. So emotional, um, you know, um, uh, the, the relationship between, the, between a boy and, <laughs> and a three-foot alien. I was born in 81, and I remember it being a, it was a, a re-release re in the theaters. My parents were divorced, so I hung out with my father every other weekend. And so he was very excited to take me to see that movie. That's what I remember about it at five or six. I remember the score really affecting me because obviously uh, when I was younger, music affected me uh, prolifically. <laughs> the audition process for The Social Network was very similar to the rehearsal process, even so that I wasn't convinced that I was in the movie until they actually put me on camera, uh, put me on set. Um, the best way to describe the character, I think, is, is the, the performance is a guy giving a performance. I thought of him as sort of Gordon Gekko meets the Riddler or the Joker, or I thought of him as someone who was able to pull strings without you even knowing it. What if these two guys actually suffer from the same insecurity and fear and paranoia and you know I look at Jesse's character Mark and how he dealt with that was he invented Facebook and I look at my character Sean and how he dealt with that was he invented Sean Parker um, so that's that was that was the character in a nutshell take for example, my last record, uh, that was kind of a character that I invented. While I was in the studio, I started coming up with sounds, with, with what I was writing, and I don't know, it, it just kind of gave a visual in my mind too, and I, I imagine that might be what it's like for a screenwriter, um, but, my, but I feel like with, with, with music, it's slightly more primitive because I think you're giving people a feeling rather than having to break down the specifics of someone's personality, uh, their traits. Essentially, you're creating characters because what you play on stage is a bigger version of an idea of, of what you're trying to portray through the music. A sound that's non-musical, that's, um, oh, you know, that's so hard to ask, like, the heart of a musician. But you don't understand, like I walk down the streets of New York and there's, you hear like honking horns and like it turns into rhythm. So it's hard. The sound of the ball going into the hole on the green, it has like this pluck up, pluck up, pluck up. Um, or the sound of a great clean golf shot, or the sound that a snowboard makes, <sighs> but it has a rhythm to it. <sighs> I walk down the street and I hear people walking and they're talking and everything has a rhythm all the time. So I'd hear horns honking, honk, honk, honk. You know, like uh, pol I, I, when I hear police cars go by, it freaks me out because it's really got a rhythm to it and it's weird. I, I try not to do that with my brain, but it, it just happens.